Good afternoon, and thank you guys for taking time away from the amazing halls of food to sit in on this session. Um, I'm excited to be here and talk about something I'm very passionate about, and that is seafood. So I'll go ahead and come clean that I have been a huge fish nerd uh, since a young age. I was always that kid with this inexplicable obsession with fish and the sea, and that only reinforced its itself more and more over the years. So it came as no surprise to my friends and family and anybody that knew me when I ended up in a life in marine science and sustainable aquaculture research, which, as she mentioned, allowed me to work in eight countries, to sail the Pacific, and to tag giant great white sharks and bluefin tuna at sea. But it's not just out of an infatuation with fish that led me into that career. While growing up in San Diego definitely put some salt water in my veins, I also grew up on a cattle ranch in New Mexico and come from an agricultural family uh, with a deep reverence for food systems, where food comes from, and the impact that food has on the planet. So I dedicated my life to sustainable food from the sea, and I truly believe that the seas will save us. Um, already, seafood is the number one most internationally traded food commodity, and the seas have, to have a tremendous capacity to feed the planet. Over 3 billion people rely on fish as their primary source of protein around the world. So whether you are an artisanal fisherman uh, providing for your family or part of the fleets of modern vessels that patrol the world's oceans, um, these are really the last hunter-gatherers that we have on the planet. In terms of uh, global consumption, seafood consumption has doubled in the last 50 years, which has driven aquaculture to become the world's fastest growing food industry. So, that begs the question, why am I here at the Fancy Food Show as founder of a snack food company? And the answer to that really begins with a trip to one of the most remote places in the world, uh, the Phoenix Islands in the nation of Kiribati, which is roughly the size of the United States in the Central Pacific. Um, it was there in this stunning and seemingly absolutely pristine place that I discovered and encountered uh, the impact of global illegal fishing firsthand. Abandoned nets on the reefs, sharks with long line hooks in their mouths, and even marine plastics, including abandoned fishing gear on the high tide uh, line of the atoll. Fraud, waste, and consumer level problems um, are huge issues prevalent in the global seafood industry. And in terms of seafood fraud and mislabeling, this presents a huge risk to personal health, uh, the environment around the planet, and social welfare and livelihoods of thousands, if not tens of thousands, people around the world. Seafood, as I mentioned, number one most internationally traded food commodity, half of all seafood, 450 million pounds in the United States, goes to waste. And even worse, the United States imports 90% of what it consumes from overseas, less than 2% of which can be traced back to a fisherman. So what is a consumer supposed to do? with all these questions. As uh, the fish guy in my family and friend group, I would often receive text messages like this one. Hey, fish friend, what is this fish? They're at a seafood counter or a restaurant. Is it safe? Is it sustainable? Is it from a clean place? Tasty? If so, how do I cook it? Please help me. In fact, one in five Americans, 65 million people, express a desire to eat more seafood in their diet if only it were a little less confusing and a little more convenient to do it. And look at this, this is <laughs> unbelievable to me. Um, when you look at household penetration for seafood, it's about 54% for, uh, for that category, whereas it's 99% across every other major grocery category, when my, in my opinion, is absolute bananas. So the question I asked myself in my career was, how can I bring quantifiably sustainable, healthy, high-quality seafood to people in a way that also met their desires and needs? So. It didn't feel like I could do that in a, research in, in a career in research. So I packed up my life uh, in Monterey and moved back to my family's cattle ranch to kind of rethink things, but also to work on getting the operation organic and grass-fed certified and possibly doing uh, value-added products like beef jerky. Well, as soon as I looked into the direction of the market, it was obvious that consumers were hungry for something healthier in the snack food category and that in the $3 billion meat snack space, more and more people were moving away from resource-intensive and, um, and, at times, unhealthy red meat for alternative options. So you can oops, imagine the look on my grandmother's face when I told her that I was 
selling my cattle to start a company making fish jerky. You don't have to imagine, actually, because that's actually it. <laughs> so next step was putting together an awesome team uh, who are here with me today and getting into the kitchen to begin experimenting. First, uh, in Santa Fe at home, where I made some really, really terrible fish jerky for a while. But after hundreds of hours of working on the recipe and finding success eventually, we went to one of the nation's top food labs uh, to perfect it and get ready for scaling up uh, and producing with a co-packer. We even, we were so dedicated to getting it right that we even mined hundreds of snack food and jerky recipes from the internet when deciding to pick what our first three SKUs to launch would be, which are smoked sea salt and juniper, honey lemon ginger, and fiery Cajun. But of course, it all starts with the fish and the sourcing model that is not only the foundation of what our company does, but the whole reason that One for Neptune even exists. U.S. seafood has become a globally recognized leader in sustainable seafood, and we wanted to both celebrate that and reward the amazing work of fishermen and policyholders, policymakers, um, who have helped the industry uh, lead the world as far as sustainability goes. And West Coast ground fish specifically um, has a bit of a Cinderella story in the 80s and 90s, it was depleted through poor management and overseas pressure, but through the, the work of multiple stakeholders who came together to put in the right uh, practices to heal the fishery, now the problem is finding a market for the amazing high quality and sustainable fish coming out in fishermen's nets. Um, the, the fishery has received MSC certification and there's even a nonprofit group called Positively Groundfish, founded with the purpose of creating markets for these amazing fish um, coming up in fishermen's nets. Our model allows seed to packet guaranteed traceability for every consumer. They can actually use a, a QR code and batch catch number on the packet to trace their product back to the fish, fisher, and fishery that it came from, including location, gear type, and even the name of the fisherman that caught the product. So the last and obviously very uh, important part of bringing this product to market was making sure that people were actually willing to taste and buy fish jerky. Right. So our team took to the road, conducting over 3,000 taste tests, and even uh, driving 21 straight hours in a U-Haul through walls of flames in Oregon and California to make our first delivery uh, for a large subscription box order. Then came a big moment at the Summer Fancy Food Show, which was our first ever food show, when Massimo Batura and several other trend spotters selected fish jerky as a top pick uh, from, this, from the show. And shortly after that, when we launched on Kickstarter, um, it took on a life of its own, uh, reaching our goal in under six hours and then continuing to grow beyond our wildest expectations. So we're off to the races now and uh, just trying to keep up with distribution interests from across the country and around the world. And I couldn't be more excited uh, to continue growing this brand with a mission to innovate and incite change in the seafood industry to help build a healthy, sustainable relationship with the ocean. Um, our story continues, and actually so does my talk, because I also wanted to touch on a few themes in the broader seafood renaissance happening across the country right now, which is, by the way, seafood, the fastest growing protein by consumer sentiment in the United States. Um, one way that consumers are bringing more seafood into their diet, and I think conveys some of the themes that I mentioned of convenience and health, is through poke. Um, from coast to coast, there's been 5x growth in the consumption of poke, which I think appeals to people with the health and convenience of a uh, lunch salad, but also is packed with protein, flavor, and is highly customizable. So I think we're going to continue to see fast seafood um, innovations coming to market. And I think while I'm here in San Francisco, I'll actually try a sushi rito, sushi burrito that I, I heard about. Um, seaweed, I think, is a trend that everyone is um, well aware of and on, on the radar this year. As far as sustainability goes, you really can't find a, a more sustainable food source. All you need is salt water, light, and time to grow it. Um, and you have a, a rich level of vitamins, omega-3, even protein. Um, there are people like uh, Michael Graham here from Monterey Bay Seaweeds, who's growing red algae in recirculating tanks and then selling boutique to the local uh, culinary market where chefs turn it into uh, a garnish for drinks, a bacon alternative on burgers, or as a center of the plate culinary creation. Um, here are friends of mine, both on the east and west coast, using wild harvest seaweed and ocean farmed 
in California and Maine and creating new products and uh, opportunities for seaweed in the market. And in CPG, there's been a boom in both uh, snack food and supplement and other products that I think is going gonna, is gonna to continue as people realize what a great healthy and sustainable uh, source of food seaweed is. Another really exciting and I think equally fun and delicious kind of revolution happening right now is in shellfish. How about my friends here with the Real Oyster Cult who uh, are sourcing directly craft oysters from small farms across the country and delivering direct to consumers at the click of a button through their app. Even Patagonia Provisions released a line of muscle-based snacks, which I think is an indication that consumers are ready uh, to both experience new flavors and new types of seafood in their daily diet. Um, so I would be remiss if I didn't take time to mention fish farming, because it's both a really polarizing topic and one that I think there's a lot of misinformation about. Um, as we all know, as foodies that understand seafood, farm fish is the devil and you should always avoid it. But um, in reality, the industry has come a really long way in advancing its sustainability of its operations. I've actually personally visited sites where they use these adorable little fish called lump suckers and others to control sea lice on salmon rather than any sort of harsh chemical treatments. And they even have um, cameras to avoid excess pellets leaving the farm and polluting the outside environment. So what it really comes down to is knowing the story behind your fish, how it's sourced, how it's produced, um, to better understand the sustainability of your seafood. And in fact, on the leading recommendation guide in the country, the Monterey Bay, Bay Aquarium's Seafood Watch, both farmed and wild salmon appear on the best choice, good alternative, and avoid lists, it's just as an example there. Um, and a company like Love the Wild has really taken charge in rewriting the narrative around farm fish and is finding a lot of success sourcing sustainably and telling a story about the future of aquaculture, which in all honesty is needed if we're going to continue feeding the planet um, and push it, as long as the industry is continued to be pushed in a sustainable direction. So in summary, I know I had to kind of buzz through those examples, but I think source traceability and quantifiable metrics um, are going to continue to be a trend in the industry and, is, and are very much needed. And we're going to continue to see new innovations and new ways that uh, food producers are finding to uh, meet the desires of the market to include more seafood in their diet. And overall, more seafood at the center of the plate. Um, we at One for Neptune will certainly continue doing our job to help create a healthy, sustainable, and delicious future from the sea. Thank you. Mm -hmm.